in the name of the love that holds us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Today is a, gr a day of great care in our Christian tradition. The Feast of All Souls invites us to hold before God all whom we love and see no longer. On this day, we remember that our grief and sorrow are held in the mystery of God's undying life. For nothing in all creation, not even death itself, could separate us from the voice of love in the end. We also remember how for centuries the church suggested that our prayers for the dead were essential to their salvation. Now, at this point in time, we see that as a bit maybe incomplete or perhaps misguided theology, for we know that God's love enfolds all beings who live from the moment of our birth to the hour of our death, and love already has overwhelmed sin and death through the never-failing love of the one who gave his life that we might live. So our prayers on this day are much more about creating space to be with what is, to honor all that we carry in our hearts. It's also a day that reveals just how limited our language is. It's a day where we shouldn't prioritize our words at all. Our prayers of remembrance and devotion, after all, fall silent in that reverence that we hold as we contemplate our departed with memories that are tender, holy, and true. Yes, this day invites us into deeper surrender to God's consolation, a consolation that brings peace, that passes human understanding. We remember how even the eternal word who spoke life into being at the very beginning of time, even Jesus himself lay quiet in the tomb on Holy Saturday. And that sacred silence, in that space where love's word would not be shut out, that silence showed there was power coming to raise Jesus from the dead. When grief touches our life, so much falls silent. We hear that in the words of the Requiem today. And we know that in our lived experience of mourning, a process that is painful and yet paradoxically has the power to attune our ears to a deeper, more profound truth. For the voice of love calls out to us even amid our earthly sorrows. And love reassures us that death does not have the final word. Our burial liturgy says it this way, life is changed, not ended. And so on this day we turn toward the one who weeps with us when we mourn, the one who draws near to us time and again with tender mercy. For in Jesus we find God willing to bear everything with us, to weep, to mourn, and yes, even to die so as to raise us to new life. We see that in the stories of Jesus' ministry, stories that recount how every time our Lord raised someone from the dead, Jesus did it by a miraculous word spoken in perfect love. With Jairus' daughter, little girl, get up. To the son of the widow of Nain, young man, I say to you, arise. At the tomb of his dear friend Lazarus, 
Lazarus, come forth. That saving word comes to us too whenever we are bowed low by the weight of our pain and sorrow. And the undying word whispers softly and surely, calling us to hear the unshakable promise of life beyond death, an undying life of never failing love that God shares with us by grace. In our scriptures today, we hear that those who have died have perhaps even greater sensitivity than we to hearing love's voice. In John's gospel, Jesus says the dead already hear the voice of the Son of God. And he wasn't just talking to the people around him saying they were dead men and women walking. He was talking about those who have gone before us into eternity. These, these dear ones who have died now hear love's voice without fail, for they rest in peace in God's nearer presence where no pain can ever touch them again. They know the great love God is always speaking into existence, for they too have become eager messengers of its sacred promise. In the eternal realms, death's sting is swallowed up by love's victory. And these servants of God, the faithful who have departed this earth, they hear love's voice clearly. The voice that calls them and commissions them to participate in love's healing labors, transforming our losses and sorrows. On today, we hear that auditory imagery of Jesus emphasized, even amplified by the Apostle Paul, who describes the risen one's cry of command like a trumpet of the archangel ringing out on that final day when God recreates heaven and earth through the word of love. Paul believes the dead will hear love's call even before we do, that they will be awakened by the word of our Lord and all of us will be caught up in that love which raises us to new life. I wonder what you make of that picture of us entering eternity together, held by the love that cherishes each and every one of us as beloved and unique and irreplaceable, as cherished in the heart of God. These images surely inspire our prayers of quiet confidence on this solemn day. And the word himself, Jesus Christ, invites us to turn toward these practiced listeners who have been granted keener ability to hear the voice of love. Jesus nudging us, encouraging us to know that they are near to us, in the mystery of that deeper life in which we all share, and their voices, as they come, as they surely do, can help our ears learn to listen for love's patient call. Yes, love unites us with all who have gone before, and love shares its grace moment by moment, preparing us to welcome love's call on that ultimate day. For now, may we encourage one another to rest in hope, to speak words of life in the face of each and every voice that would speak anything other than the love of God in this world. Because we do wait in trust, knowing that love is calling us all home. 
In that day when human sorrow and suffering will flee away at last, and in all the days that lie ahead of us, may we know the embrace of our Creator's never-failing love. Amen.